you know how as farmers we're always going to local farm stores and they're always selling us some Chinese junk, especially when it comes to clothing? Well, here's your chance to actually support an American-made company. And they're even gonna give you a chance to win $250 towards their site by going and clicking the link down below in this description. All American Clothing partnered with our farm and we wanna spread the news and the word that they are an American-made company. The choice is yours. Buy American-made clothing and know that your clothing wasn't made during arts and crafts time for some kids or don't, that's your choice. Got all the equipment warming up. So we'll kind of give you a, a real quick overview of how this manure situation works on our farm. If you saw last video, you've seen us clean this whole area out where the sheep are at. We scrape everything out and it ends up in a pile, something like this right here. This mixture is a simple mixture of oak sawdust, manure, which there's a little bit of manure right there by my thumb, and hay residue and of course urine from the sheep. Now the benefit to this is that it's gonna go out in our hay field and it's gonna get a little more time to break down. It is pretty cold here this morning. You can already see the steam coming off that pile just from me grabbing some of it. Uh, I think it was around 15 or 17 last night. So it's supposed to be 40 today. We wanna get this spread this morning while the ground's still frozen so the chances of ruts are minimal. We have a few different ways though that we collect data and ensure that we're spreading evenly and keeping the same pattern for each year so it's a fair comparison between the years. It's not with any fancy auto steer equipment or any fancy expensive GPS stuff. We'll show you that in the tractor. Uh, it's just simply an Android app that you can use on your phone or if you have an Android radio in your tractor like we put in, you can just use that. So the first time that we cut hay on this property was the first year we owned it. And we'll just call that year one to make this math simple, to show the benefits of the manure. When we made our first hay crop here, it made 27 five by five round bales. It's 27 five by five round bales, averaged out to 1.3 bales per acre. So barely over a bale an acre and unacceptable numbers for South Central Missouri. It also was kind of a little bit of a kick in the pants because we had intentions of making at least two, if not three bales an acre and selling the extra bales because that year we really only needed about 20, 25 bales of hay. So we made enough for our flock, but we didn't make enough to sell any and make some money back. That money was gonna be put towards fertilizer was our intentions. When we weren't able to do that, we kind of looked at other options and said, hey, we're gonna build a barn. We should just take that manure and spread it. Now the first year we didn't have enough manure to spread over our whole hay field. And had we spread it over the whole hay field, that would have been minimal. Sorry, this the first year we had the barn. So this is year two now. Year two, we made almost 47 bales. We're, so it's 46 and a baby bale, but we're gonna call it 47. Nearly doubled our original hay yield from the year before. And that was with sheep manure, but we also did turkey litter and one section. So one seven acre portion of the field was turkey litter, one seven acre portion was sheep manure, and one seven acre, seven acre portion was a mixture of both sheep manure and turkey litter. Now across that spectrum, none of them yielded better than the other section. And it kind of showed to us that there's not necessarily enough benefit for us to buy sheep manure or buy turkey litter when we have enough turkey litter. Sorry, when we have enough sheep manure. My goodness, words are hard. So again, that led us to the yield of that one. And 47 bales was good. That was much closer to what we were anticipating to have. And the better portion was yet to come. Turkey litter, just like the sheep manure with the hay residue and the sawdust mixed in it, that bedding, all need a little more time to break down and be able to get absorbed into the soil. That's why you see us spreading this in January when weather permits. Sometimes we're not able to because it's too wet and at those times we have to just wait a week or two and it's unfortunate, but it's just what it is. Now, year three was different again in the aspect that we couldn't afford turkey litter even if we wanted to use any because commercial fertilizer had went up so much that everybody was selling any kind of fertilizer super high and turkey litter was not exempt from that. 
what we did instead was we decided, hey, we're gonna take the sheep manure that we have and it's gonna be at a lower rate. So currently what we spread is roughly about one ton an acre. And one ton of the sawdust and sheep manure and hay residue mixed in is what we did on that final year. So the third year that we're about to talk about, all because of prices just being so high. Well, when we actually got to harvest it and check our yields, we went from 47 bales an acre on year two with sheep manure and turkey litter to year three with just sheep manure only at a lighter rate, making a whopping 63 bales. Now, 63 bales puts us right at three bales an acre. And from the beginning, nearly triple of what we originally had made. Awesome numbers, right? Well, we're gonna keep doing that because the benefit to it is simple. I don't have a way to keep my sheep on pasture without destroying that pasture through the winter because South Central Missouri, it doesn't really get cold enough to keep the ground frozen and it doesn't rain a lot, which makes the ground moist and essentially turns a pasture into a mud pit when you have a bunch of animals on it. And even if you rotate them through it, the problem with that is they're gonna consistently pick the grass and make it to where it's real short and it'll take it longer to grow come springtime. This is where the barn comes in. So the barn doesn't just protect our animals from predators while lambing season is here. It doesn't just make it simpler for us to deal with animals during lambing season. It also makes it simpler for us to manage the flock and collect the manure.
this program that you see on this Android device right here is called Field Navigator. It's a 100% free app. You can pay to have ads removed, but the ads are only in the very beginning of when you open it. So just absolutely awesome product. This is not RTK accurate. This is not going to get you, you know, sub inch accuracy or anything like that. It's plus or minus three feet. And honestly, for what we're doing with manure spreading, isn't as big of a deal, but for spraying, it is, and we actually set our um, broadcast path a little sl or a little smaller. I'd rather overcast and sort of waste a little bit to ensure that I covered everything. So now that we've reached the field again, I'm actually about to get started here, and it's going to be really tricky with less hands. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to get going, and I will turn my PTO on once I get close to there, and I'll hit this resume button that you see in the bottom right. Now, once I hit that resume button. You see that it's going to start leaving that green streak behind us. That green streak behind us is just showing what we've covered. You get my RPMs right here, so I'm spreading the same rate. I'm going over somewhere that I didn't quite finish last round. And I'm going to stop it right up here where it starts to overlap. So I'll turn the PTO off first. And then I'll turn this off. That way the actual overlap is not real in that aspect because I've turned it off and the product hasn't been being spread. 